Hey everybody, this is Dave here with another update to the uh, Shiva Online RPG Engine. I'm just going to log in and show you real quick here. I'll pick a guy. Uh, we'll connect. Uh, one of the improvements here is that if you're the only user, it realizes you're going to be the master client, and it will not bother to allow you to you know, specify specific creation or what have you. So some changes here are that I have added uh, uh, XML transformations to mounted objects so that I can specify rotations or translation offsets right in XML so I can move I can sort of tweak these handheld objects left or right up or down what have you or change their rotation as they come in very very handy for attaching widgets to characters uh, let's see I've also been working on the chat menu so if you hit enter it will come up and focus the chat for you And uh, if you hit enter and there's the chat object is currently focused, but there's no text in there, it'll close it down for you and give you focus back so you can move. That's mostly working correctly. One of the other things I've done also is I've added what I call uh, HUD HI effects. What it does is create a helper object near the character and attaches a HUD to that character and you pass in the text along with what type of effect it is. So let's say it is a, a damage type effect, it's going to color it red, add a minus symbol in front of it, and if it's uh, like heal, it'll color it green and add a plus symbol, and I can use other symbols as well. I can use uh, you, know, you know, yellow for experience, or blue for some other color type, what have you. Uh, and I'm also going to have the ability, I have the, the element on the HUD, but I'm not using it yet, to add a, a picture. So if I want an icon to float up for like a poison icon or a... Uh, like a quest icon or something like that, it'll have that ability to do that as well. So here I have had uh, the chance to add in something I'm calling chat commands. And this is something I wrote a long time ago and completely forgot about. Uh, basically, if I go into my chat and type something that starts with a backslash, I can then specify whatever kind of command I want. And as long as I have code that supports it, it'll do something. So if I take backslash hurt me and then a number in front of it, this is going to take the, uh, up to four different parameters and pass it right on to the AI that's attached to him uh, just with whatever the command is. And the command uh, is hurt me, so it realizes that it's going to need a damage uh, of whatever I passed in. And I've set up handlers, event handlers for, for damaging, for healing, you know, for, for setting health explicitly to certain numbers, that kind of stuff. So in this case, if I type hurt me one, you can see that it does indeed hurt him. Well, let's type a larger number so that you can see the effect here. It goes down, down, down. So his health is slowly decreasing. And that can happen in rapid succession. The opposite thing, of course, is heal me. These are just commands that I can use to test out uh, you know, different effects. But uh, obviously, text commands in an online game can be really helpful if you need to teleport a user somewhere or you just, you know, you want to add different admin commands that you don't want to create an interface for. This just comes in really handy. Uh, some of the other features of the, uh, the effect HUD are that it will slow, it'll take, in about a one and a half seconds, it'll disappear completely. So the object and the HUD that it's attached to will just di disappear completely. And you can tweak that in your own code if you like. Uh, it'll also fade out the opacity after about a second of being alive. I think I can hurt myself to death. Let me just try that. Some sadistic. Let's see. Oh, do you hurt me? 15. Yay! I can even hurt myself after I'm dead. So uh, I'm gonna spawn back in here and uh, and just show you the other thing I've been working on, which is um, I, I completely tied together the equipment in with a combat system. So now when I mount this. I have, I'm taking the uh, parameters out of the XML file, things like weapon range, damage, uh, uh, damage types, things like that. So if I walk up to this guy and whack on him, I now have some AI that will go out and the server will decide, you know, what your attack roll was versus your attack skill versus the damage that you're supposed to be able to put out with the weapon, compare it to his defense, and then give you a result as an attack. I've also started coding in the AI's attack ability so that he realizes he's in range to be able to actually do an attack. Previously, he was just sort of throwing a projectile at you. If he's not in range, he's going to walk up to you. Uh, let me see if I can make this work, too. I have, here we go, I have different uh, objects around the avatar, which are the target locations. 
and these exist so that he can pick the nearest target location and if there's lots of AI monsters around they'll all sort of line up around me instead of stacking up on top of each other. So these move around with me, the target locations. Going back into runtime display mode, they'll continue to beat on me. You can see that I have to uh, modify my I need to modify my timing. Right now he plays his attack animation and there's too much of a delay between uh, when I actually experience the death or the hit. So that's kind of what I've gotten done. Uh, and uh, the other thing I guess I we've done here is I've decided to explicitly set my FPS maximum inside the application to 30. I could also do 60. And the result of this has been a much smoother uh, everything, much smoother animations, much smoother physics. Uh, and this is due, of course, to the screen re refresh rate matching up with, uh, with coding loops. So that is kind of it for now, and we will give you another update soon.